All right. Hello, boys and ghouls. Welcome to a very special interview episode of Dads for the Crypt. Tales from the Crypt fans may know today's interviewee as an ill-fated fraternity pledge named Waters in the season five episode, House of Horrors. You also might know him from singing the Babysitter Blues and Adventures in Babysitting or getting high with a dog named Elvis. And don't tell mom the babysitter's dead. Today, we're talking to actor Keith Coogan. Ah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for oh, listening. Well, and uh, thanks for having me on. Oh, That's my great. God. Thanks for coming on. As I was saying, Adventures in Babysitting is our go-to movie as a kid. Nothing like Kids in Danger, Gang Fights, <laughs> Skyscrapers. There were a lot of kids in danger in the eighties. <laughs> uh, we uh, definitely, you know, I think it was the uh, product of Reaganomics, um, and both parents working mm -hmm. uh, kids were a generation of latchkey children. Well, especially so, uh, when you watch them as as a parent or in the, as an older, you're like, wait a second, that, that looked fun as a kid, but now it's like, no, get away. No one, no one was watching the children. Do you remember the movie uh, The Wizard? with yes. uh, Fred Savage. Yeah, we interviewed yes. uh, the director, uh, Tom Holland, and I rewatched it for the first time. It had been 30 years. And I was like, there's so much child endangerment in this movie in Nintendo. The uh, 80s attempt at jargon and uh, lingo mm -hmm. uh, slang. It, it, we knew at the time it wouldn't last tubular, really. Are you mm -hmm. serious? <laughs> Radical, that's rad. All right, we still say that's rad. So. Hey, my dad bet me, I can't remember how much. I couldn't say Cowabunga the day we went to go see Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in the theater. And I lost. Oh, that's I just <laughs> absurd. You got to say Cowabunga. Yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about you. So you were born in Palm Springs. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. I'll make sure IMDb, IMDb didn't fail me. And uh, when did you migrate to Los Angeles? So born in Palm Springs. A uh, little bit of time there. We went to Sacramento. Mm -hmm. um, maybe back to Palm Springs. I think it was maybe. When did Evil Knievel jump the Snake River? Oh, God. 74. I, that's let's look it up. Question, right? I, I don't, uh, don't want to break something here on my end. Um, so Snake I remember River. watching that live. Uh, uh, at one point, I think we had gone back to Palm Springs. And then to... a tennis change room in malibu and i started going okay. up for commercials and stuff that was uh, 1974 yeah yeah about 74 75 i think uh we got an agent went union in 76 and uh but um oh yeah early exposure to movies my mother uh at one point was an usher and hmm. I think in a year and a half, plopped me down to watch a Clockwork Orange. <laughs> very young when seeing The Sting, Exorcist, Jaws. Um, and so uh, I love movies. I've you know, hmm. always had uh, enjoyed uh, movies. And even though I started in TV, uh, the goal was always to get to film. And had hmm. read for so many films before getting Adventures hmm. in Babysitting. So you, was your mom sneaking you in while she was working? Is it that kind of situation? Oh, yeah, just, just plopping out in the front row. <laughs> that's awesome. That's that's great day parenting. Love it. Oh yeah. Um, so do you remember one of your, your first roles? Was it you so you did commercials? Yeah, um McDonald's commercials, mm -hmm. uh coast soap cereals, rice krispies, sugar smacks, corn pops, um and uh, I did about, for about 65 brands. I did probably about 100 uh, na national commercials, Cool Whip, Charmin, uh, Pillsbury Doughboy, Duncan Hines. Uh, and uh, I re you, you really learn a set and lighting and holding a prop and, you know, kind of getting a lot done really quick. Mm -hmm. so yeah, I mean, I'm moving into TV. Yeah, I'm looking at your IMDb, and it looks like you did about six different projects in 1979 alone. <laughs> like, you're you're killing it early, like TV shows and movies at the same time. Um, and then you did uh, The Fox and the Hound. Yeah, that was... Uh, uh, talk to my mom, that was an audition like any other. I wasn't particularly going up for voiceovers, but uh, I found myself on Disney Studios recording uh 
the voice of the fox over several months uh maybe a year or two we would come in they wanted our voices to kind of age up in the mm. first half of the movie and um some delays there was a kerfuffle in making the film at disney at the time uh they lost uh, don bluth who's uncredited on the film uh okay. and a lot of animators had jumped ship right at that time uh so it came we started in 78 and it came out in 81 oh wow i didn't realize that uh that's again in the movie i saw as a kid i don't think i've seen it since but definitely like brings you right back um and then so you uh adventures of basing was that one of your first t- film roles i guess you did a couple of the kind of doing tv 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 Yep. And then movies boom. of the week after school yeah. specials. And then yes, adventures of babysitting was the first, uh, uh, lead. Thank you to Chris Columbus. Mm-hmm. Appreciate it, Chris. Yeah. I love the after school special of the week. The titles are always, are always amusing. There was, um, the ones of yours aren't like too outlandish, but Will Wheaton did one. I was like in his IMDb yesterday when we did the, your episode, your tales episode, he was in a afternoon special called, Daddy isn't crazy, dot, 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 is he? Okay, so family dealing with mental health issues. Got it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I did right. Over the Limit with uh, Drunk Driving, mm-hmm. uh, featuring a very uh, young and new Sam Rockwell. Oh, wait, there's uh, another one I remember seeing with uh, Martin Sheen, <laughs> who's also like a father who I think drove drunk or something along those lines. Oh, yes, yes. I, I vividly did one, remember that. Um, a Town's Revenge, which was a combo about McCarthyism and uh, organic growing <laughs> without growing apples without Alar or whatever Alan, Alan okay. whatever the the sure. uh, product was. Um, it was like a grandmother uh, sharing land with me and then telling tales of McCarthyism. <laughs> Apparently she was some sort of commie. Uh, <laughs> and uh, they were fun. Uh, I, I, oh, and also younger, I did... Um, a uh cbs library which was their version of the abc after school special uh, animal talk which had three stories uh white fang call of the wild and rascal and i was uh in rascal okay i worked a lot of animals when i was a kid did you like that or is that uh, a little stressful uh cats and dogs chickens horses snakes raccoons Mm. cheetahs uh i i i uh get get along with animals lassie i got to present really? the award on nickelodeon kids choice award with lassie that's awesome that's top-notch a-list star right there that just made me think of uh have you seen nope nope no nope? okay <laughs> if you watch it you'll you'll get the, you'll get what, that, what that's making me think mm-hmm. of but um all right so ventures about you sitting your first movie role how did was that auditioning how was that process Oh, that was a series of auditions, callbacks to uh, screen tests. And um, they had a little warehouse in Burbank uh, in the industrial area and a uh, convertible in the alley behind it and a doorway set to shoot several babysitters at the door talking to her boyfriend telling her that she can't you know he can't go on the date tonight that night because his sister's sick and so they shot a bunch of those then they shot with uh kids in a car a couple of the car scenes and they're rotating and mixing matching all of the cast Mm. and then uh an l train scene a bit of there's a scene where we're walking on the waterfront and uh some of that dialogue was in all one scene with the other Mm -hmm. dialogue in the L train scene. And uh, so those three scenes were the audition pieces for (laughs) adventures of babysitting. Yeah. It was hair raising. Uh, It was uh, definitely the closest I I thought I'd come. I was very close on the shining. Oh, really? uh, Had uh, was close on Goonies. ET had read for stand by me Christmas story. Mm. Um, so many films. Uh Friday the 13th, part four, final chapter. Wow. The what is it? Uh the uh so I'm trying to think of a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy joke, the ever increasingly misnamed 
Friday the Thirteenth Part Four Final Chapter, mm-hmm. and uh, of course Corey Feldman got that. I was very right. very bitter. Corey, <laughs> we all we all, but there was a lot of parts, and all of us got work. So if you mm-hmm. didn't get a part, you got a part the next you know week. Mm-hmm. Cool. So um, I've always wondered the blues club scene. Is that was that a state uh, a stage? Was that an actual location? That is at Fitzgerald's, uh, a bit outside of uh, Chicago, and it's where Paul Newman gave Tom Cruise the balabushka in Color of Money. <laughs> so watch Color of Money and that club. Imagine it with pool tables instead of a, a blues blues bar. Wow! It was, but it was a work. Was it a functioning blues bar at the time? Uh huh. It's a it's a club nightclub, and mm-hmm. uh, they rent it out for uh, for filming. That's awesome. That that scene is always one of my favorites. Um, and then you got to get into a gang fight on film, or at least get in the middle of one. Get in the middle of a gang fight, you know. I'm just trying to impress, you know. And Brad knows he's you know got a good heart, so he's trying to do the right thing, even though he's goaded into it mm-hmm. by a uh, freaking Daryl. My God. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's funny. It's a funny scene. And uh, Chris Columbus had said, I think he was quoting. Um, Frank Capra, he said, uh, uh, a movie has to have three great scenes and no bad ones. <laughs> and uh, he focused on the L train sequence, the frat party and the blues bar scene. Yeah, that makes sense. Maybe it was the frat party. You know, there was a kind of a hospital scene. <laughs> That's uh, really funny. Yeah, a couple of choices there. We rehearsed for two weeks uh, in December of 86. And we're seeing the costumes and the storyboards and, you know, photos of the set coming together. Uh, snowing. And then it kind of stopped snowing when we started shooting in the beginning of January. We had to put <laughs> fake snow around the uh, parents' house. There were days where they had to dig out snow and then put fake snow. And uh, uh, we shot a lot at night for mm-hmm. weeks and weeks. We were filming at night. A lot of it was really, really shot running around toronto was was most of the film two months in toronto two weeks in chicago and then a week in los angeles for oh. special effects right well speaking of special effects so like the skyscraper scenes was that like a back like was that like a, a painted backdrop and then they had like a portion of it built how they it do was, that uh intravision so it's plate photography shot at mm. the building but they uh have a big uh, screen made out of the reflector material on uh, roads. So it just shines light right back into the lens. And they use a uh, piece of glass. They project onto the glass, 45 degree angle. So the camera mm. is the projector. The actor's face and clothes don't absorb. They have actually absorbed the light and it doesn't get reflected back into the camera. James Cameron used this on aliens when the right. spaceship crashes Uh it was used in Stand By Me with the train sequence. It was used in The Fugitive with the bus crash. Um, and it's a great in-camera. You see it in the dailies the next day. No mat lines. You could move about. They had a, um, I think there was a fall of the Third Reich film made for TV movie. And they uh, had uh, just photos of uh, you know these great, huge halls. But they had uh, characters walking between chairs and tables mm. in them, and they're just they could mat it on stage, right? And uh, it's very you could move the camera and tilt and pan, and so it was very clever. And so we did um, walking on the beam to escape the chop shop. <gasps> okay, yeah. We did. Uh, we're also using it to pick up stage to pick up a couple of bits of dialogue with the Pruitt. We shot scenes with Pruitt in the cab of the truck in Toronto. Chicago and Los Angeles. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, yeah, I remember I was reading. I was, I was I was reaching like a making of for Lord of the Rings, and there's a scene where um, a guy is standing in front of a fire, and he the horse to go up and push the guy on, back onto the fire, but the horse wouldn't go near the fire. So they did the same kind of gag, where they like projected the with a with a mirror the fire there, so it looks like there's fire. And the horse doesn't see the fire, so we can do this stunt. Oh, that's great. Uh, yeah, you know, big digital films, simplest tricks. Um, when, so when when you were in that scene where the guy throws the knife like in your shoe, were you like was did you go like with your mother to the premiere and there was just the, the visual of your her son's foot getting stabbed? Did that freak her out? Anyone like 
Do you get stabbed? I might have explained to her our trick, but uh, uh, she was thrilled. I was alone, uh, 16, when we started filming. And I turned 17 about uh, a week and a half into filming. Mm -hmm. The lobby of the Associate Center, when I find Sarah's cape and I go, Sarah's in trouble. And I get that nice Spielberg dolly <laughs> push in. That was my birthday. Aww. <laughs> um. So I was mostly 17 when shooting the film, but uh, very, uh, uh, very good time. Wait, what was the question? <laughs> I was asking about the if anyone ever freaked out oh, about the, you getting so, stabbed so, in the foot. So number one, I drank two Jolt Colas uh, before the the you know scene with them, and mm -hmm. then when they get to go shoot the do the knife into the foot, they said if we're gonna put the uh, monofilament. And we're going to put little holes on the knife and slide it down. It's going to slide down the thing. And I went, I have a great idea. Why don't you put the knife in my foot and then just pull it out with the mm. monofilament and roll the film backwards. So that thunk yeah. help the thunk sound when it hits help sell it. But if you watch it frame by frame, you'll see the hole in my shoe is there before the knife hits because that is a yeah. trick, reverse trick. Well, yeah, that's another colossal. Like James Cameron and Aliens for the facehugger when it's in that yeah. one room. The oh, lot, lot, most of the facehugger stuff is reverse film because they're just, pull, they're just pulling it back, but you do reverse and it's coming at you. Star so, Wars, when the sand person yeah. waves his oh, yeah. bantha stick, he's like, We had such a short. The guy was like getting up, he was like stretching. Oh, okay, I'm gonna get up. And they're like, mm -hmm. They cut it too. <laughs> <laughs> Um, now, one of the things that always really spoke to me in that movie is the relationship with you and the uh, the sister character, Maya Bruton. Um, again, because I used to watch this with my younger sister all the time. So I think that's part of, that might be partly why I liked it so much, because it was a very realistic portrayal. Did you and her like bond for a while or like did you build up that relationship or just. Oh, totally got along with her, her little sister and her mother, who were all there in Toronto with us, all staying in the same hotel. Um, and we felt that we were on our own adventures together, uh, but that we both wouldn't, we, our bond was we won't rat each other out to mom. <laughs> and we never, there's no point where we're like, well, I'll tell mom to each other. We'll, we'll rat out uh, Chris Parker that mm -hmm. you know, to get us to go into the city. How exciting. So that, that instant, um, uh, you know, I, you know, the fighting with her, I think, is just a sibling thing. Mm -hmm. My brother was maybe five when I didn't have that kind of like fighting with my uh, I was 12 years old when he was born. So and I never had sisters, so it was fun to have a little sister. Oh, yeah, it's really, it comes across really well on screen. <laughs> um, oh, Brad. Oh, Brad. Yeah, a little weird on the line reading, but OK. And his, uh, his acne cream. I love it. I can't use paint. <laughs> um, and then the Vincent D'Onofrio scene, you know, he's pretending to be Thor. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So nobody knew who D'Onofrio was. They right. told us he just came off of a Stanley Kubrick film, a Vietnam picture, and we're like, minds blown. <laughs> and uh, as a matter of fact, when we were doing the press tour for it, Full Metal Jacket came out a a week or two before Adventures of Babysitting, they came out oh, with Trip Hammer. Wow! And by that time, he was filming uh, Mystic Pizza. Mm -hmm. uh, he was method. He never broke character. He just kind of sat there and puffed and breathed, and he's very in the moment and real and uh, scary guy. There's no acting with Vincent D'Onofrio. <laughs> well, it, it's just, it's mind-blowing because he goes from playing Thor, you know, and 30 years later, he's playing um, Kingpin on the Marvel series. So again, for, for the geeks, that's just like, oh, no, no, that guy, that guy used to be the, that guy was the OG Thor. I think I heard an interview where he said, Kingpin has such this terrible backstory, but he's like, I will never pity the character when I'm playing him. Mm -hmm. So he tries to come up with that strength, but uh, he shows of all, all the actors they could pick to show vulnerability. Vincent's fantastic. Oh, 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't hear the name Vanessa anymore without thinking of that. Um, and then, of course, Elizabeth Shue, you know, you, you get to work with some amazing babysitters. We'll, we'll get to the another one, but oh, Elizabeth Shue. Nice. Elizabeth Shue, uh, Penelope Ann Miller, both mm-hmm. hysterical. And uh, uh, Elizabeth was a fearless leader for our troop. Whatever we think we had to crawl across or, you know, ladders we had to climb or roofs we had to run across or cars we had to dodge. Um, Lisa was always first in. And uh, we spent a lot of time in, a, in that station wagon, uh, <laughs> a solid week filming so much dialogue in the station wagon, but um, moves along really quick. Uh, f- so fun. And uh, sh- I think she takes her comedy just as seriously as I do. Uh, and Chris Columbus, too. He he warned us about going over the top. I think mm-hmm. over the top had just been released. And Toronto has huge cinemas. The first about time I saw a Cineplex Odeon. And I think we the cast had seen over the top while we were shooting Adventures of Babysitting. We all looked at each other and went, okay, we can't ever kind of shit on the audience. Believability. We got to like, we have to really buy it. So we'd always kind of look at each other and go, buyable, not buyable. And uh, I think Chris Columbus has that Spielberg meets John Hughes. Mm-hmm. A little sensationalism. You see just a couple of those Spielberg camera moves, but then he knows how to work with kids and be one of the kids and like, you know, talk to us excitedly and get us going. And uh, uh, no issues that no, we hit every day we had to hit. We never fell behind schedule. Mm. Um, he uh, he was really solid captain, but at least Lisa was, you know, I had a terrible crush on her. So no <laughs> acting involved. Wait, so who do, who do you think you had a bigger crush on, uh, Elizabeth Shue or Christine Applegate? Elizabeth Shue. Christine Applegate was a friend, mm. only a friend, uh, for a few years prior to doing uh, Don't Tell Mom. So I'd already been over to Christine's house okay. you know, years before uh, that. Nice. Uh, so it was, a, it was a pleasure to finally work with a friend, that, mm-hmm. and that was smooth as butter. Yeah, so how did you get involved with that movie? A call to read for Brian, the clown dog boy. Mm-hmm. My family had a rule, uh, never do the same part over mm-hmm. it. Like you'll get typecast and uh, uh, character actor is more our style. And you can't steal a scene if you're in every scene. So supporting uh, player, the That's... fast talking, lots of exposition, best friend. Very good at that <laughs> role. <laughs> the cousin, the brother, the friend. That's um, funny because Kenny is like the op- complete opposite of Brad. I love it. I had, uh, it was just an autograph convention, the tune con and uh, somebody was looking, I love mentioned the babysitting. And they looked at don't tell mom with the wig and they go, wait a second. <laughs> You're not. Oh, and they had the mind blowing moment. It was very fun. I love that. Yeah, it was very far. So I had read for clown, the clown dog boy and uh, saw a potential, in Kenny, I loved the character and wanted to uh, take a stab at it. So had hid a wig and uh, ripped jeans in my car. <laughs> After I read for uh, the clown dog boy, I went out in my car and uh, changed and came back in and read for uh, Kenny. Awesome. Did you, uh, were you already listening to some metal or did you get, or did you get into metal to get into the, uh, the character? That's whenever uh, a friend played me, nothing else matters, mm-hmm. Metallica. And I went, Kind of like classical music. I was a big band nerd. Okay. And uh, uh, it, discernible from pure noise. I'd grown up with punk and funk and all sorts of musical influences. But uh, that, uh, yeah, that set me off onto cooking, playing guitar, you know, expanding my musical horizons into some rat, some uh, yeah. skid row. A lot of uh, Iron <laughs> Maiden posters. <laughs> huh? The Iron Maiden, oh, there's like a big oh, Iron Maiden poster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That character is really fun. Um, yeah. And so, what, what else can you tell us about that shoot? You're not your character isn't like as the main so, in that one, but it's definitely like yeah, he pops in and steals the scene. That's definitely a scene stealing role. I just found an old clip of a uh, 
uh, TV news magazine. Remember mm-hmm. those that mm-hmm. came on about seven oh, yeah. o'clock at night? And uh, it was interviewing Christina Applegate. And then they show behind the scenes, they actually show a shooting, the film. And a couple of different scenes. They were, I think there were, there were a couple of different days. And uh, they show alternate takes mm-hmm. of uh, a few dialogue scenes that are clearly different than what was in the final movie. And um, really did fl- kind of flash me back. I just saw that clip today. And um, it was uh, hot. Uh, uh, it was uh, well it was one of a rolling thunder. I like to call it like adventures in babysitting. This wasn't a low budget film. It wasn't a high fi high budget sci fi picture. It was a well supported studio picture. So, um, Warner Brothers uh, uh, really trusted Stephen Herrick and uh, Brian Riley, Bobby Newmeyer, Outlaw Pictures. They had made Sex Lies and Videotape. Mm-hmm. Um, and it may have been a negative pickup situation where they'll make the film, then they sell it to Warner Brothers, then Warner Brothers releases it. Um, and it was uh, who's running the asylum. So, and and everybody, there was nobody on the set going, that's too far or that's too camp or that's, you know, because look at Joanna Cassidy's performance. One of the best camp, and it never breaks its, its drama or its realness. Mm-hmm. It's she's very tender in there. Um, and I wanted to make Kenny a character, not a caricature. Uh, right. and knew I live next door to the same stoner that was the influence for Spicoli to Sean <laughs> Penn. <laughs> yeah, I definitely see a lineage there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then add Bill and Ted. You're good to go. Yeah, well, I was just I was looking at um Stephen Herrick, Herrick's uh IMDb and I didn't yes. realize he did all of these movies. Ducks, he did Ducks, Ducks. Yeah, he did Mighty Ducks, Ducks. Three he did Musketeers, Musketeers, uh, The Critters, Bill and Ted's yes. Excellent Adventure, Mr. Yes. Holland's Opus. Critters, which brings us to Tales from the Crypt. Yes, let's talk some Tales from the Crypt. Yeah. Critters 2 has a little house. That was the frat house in our Tales from the Crypt episode. Oh. And it was right at the foot uh, down about 200 yards from the uh, Nothing But Trouble house. So it's in that same lot in that same okay. area. They had one street that was like a little elbow bend with a street lamp and a fake fire hydrant and a house with a picket fence and nothing else. And that was just and it was a usable interior exterior. So we shot inside that house. Hot. Oh, wow. And, uh, but so I, we, I didn't mean to transition too soon. No, 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 no. This is all. perfect. Uh, but this is the critters. That's uh, Stephen Herrick. Yes. Yeah. No, this is a perfect transition. So, what studio was all that? Were both those uh, sites on? So near Magic Mountain. Uh, okay, so the uh, which is about forty miles. Yeah. Well, for listeners, but uh, forty minutes north of LA or so. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the Six Flags parks, and about an exit or two before. Just a little area. It's empty land now. Maybe a car lot. Um, and they had the at the foothill of the mountains, they had the nothing but trouble house. And just a shell of a house. Uh, inside there were uh, ladders and little catwalks to stand at the windows. Uh, uh-huh. But no inside of the house. That was in a sound stage in um, Marina Del Rey. Well, yeah. What's so funny is the second I saw that house, I thought Anne's family. Like, is that did they reuse the house from the 90s Anne's family mo- movie? Because it looked <laughs> very similar. And then I got the further connection between that. I was like, oh, that would have been cool. But then I saw nothing but Trump. I'm like, oh, okay, that, that's totally different. The bottom floor of the Adams family house is a house in the Adams district of LA, uh, right near USC campus. And uh, the upper floors were a matte painting. Mm. And the interior of the Adams family set were reused pieces from the parlor scene in unsinkable molly brown the film at 20th century fox wow. so they it was about three times the size they used about a third of that set to kind of piece together the adams family house if you see behind the scene pictures it's bright pink yes the adams i love family those really pictures bright pink. so that is if you see the parlor so there's a huge musical sequence in the parlor in unsinkable molly brown and uh you'll recognize pieces of the adams family set there <laughs> but yeah it's so funny because that movie you just think of it as like goth <laughs> and black and white and then you see the pictures it's like totally psychedelic i love but it's it it's not it's fun yeah it's innocent it's pure oh yeah they're about love and support and support each other 
they're curious about people that don't live the way that they do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see the new Wednesday uh, show. That looks fun. I just learned Fred Armisen is a mm-hmm. professor. Yes, that's that's cool. I like that. Brief bit in the clip looked great. That's why is Keith Coogan not playing Uncle Fester? I don't know. <laughs> you don't want to go bald. I don't know. Uh, I come on. I'm the same age he was. I know that that would be really neat at the end of the second season. And uh, I'll I'll do it. I'll shave my head. I'll do it. <laughs> that would have been really cool. Um, all right, so back to crypto. Okay, so this is kind of blowing my mind because I just figured the frat house was a soundstage because the only you only you don't really see the outside much, but that's right. really cool. So that was a that was a uh, a building, practical little mm-hmm. like movie set. Um, and oh, so it might just have a f- been a model home. Uh, okay, at one point, but I think yeah, it's just a little. And it's in Critters too, <laughs> not the one with the staple holding together the centerfold. I have to check. It's been so long since I've seen those, and they all just kind of mesh together okay. after a while. But um, yeah, that's and, really uh, cool to learn. And then you go up this path, which would have been through the car graveyard uh, mm. to uh, to the house, and um, uh, the inside of that house was was on a sound stage, and then mm. on the side of that 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 set was used over and over again and redressed. It kind of looks like the inside of the psycho house. Yeah, but yeah a little that bit too. bigger. And uh, you know, usable gallery or balconies up, and and great staircase. To if you're facing the staircase to the right, behind those flats was uh, the crypt keeper, the coffin, the mm. hole uh, to shoot those opening opening inserts because they shoot oh, a okay. new one for each episode. Right, right. Um, yeah. So you're you're intro scene this episode. You're uh, you're scrubbing the floors and your tidy whities. Did you get to keep those? Me and Will Wheaton wind up doing so many movies in our underwear. I don't get it. <laughs> probably my own underwear. Nah, they, they probably gave us those. I don't know. That was, uh, uh, you know, when you're um, in your teens and early 20s, you, uh, you know, it's your ego and, and being made a fool. Uh, but to be much on Tales like, from the Crypt, I will gladly get down on all fours. and uh, mm-hmm. Much <laughs> like a pledge in the fraternity. <laughs> Yeah, you, I had uh, never done the college of the Greek system. So yeah, did you double did up? A, huh? Did you double up on underwear for that? Just in case, no, or just let yeah, hang. Yeah, you gotta, you know, be organic. Let let the uh let the energy flow. <laughs> and uh how was Kevin Dillon on set? Oh, what an animal. <laughs> he was he had so much dialogue. He's just so much just rat tat tat tat. Yeah, he's such a nice guy. He's playing this heavy you know, pushing us around and, uh, um, it, and the, the guys were like a murderer's row with uh, Michael mm-hmm. DeLuise and Courtney Gaines and, uh, Jason uh, London. Yeah. Jason London, Bryant Krause, um, uh, Will Wheaton. Uh, yeah, so Kevin did, was, you know, did, to take command and yeah. charge of all of us because we're all just total fuck ups and like fucking around between takes and stuff. And action, boom! You know, all yeah, so done a lot of TV and movies, and yeah. he was able to turn it off between scenes. Is what you're saying? He no, yet he'd be kind of fired <laughs> up. He'd be, you know, he'd be swapping the paddle or whatever. You know, less. I think he played less. Yeah, less. yeah. And uh, he'd be, he'd have to kind of stay in it between. I think. Oh man, it's easier for him than jumping in and out. That's... <laughs> but he's really, really sweet, humble, hardworking guy. So how did uh, Bob Gale like wrangle <laughs> this uh, stable of young actors? You know, usually it's the first AD uh, when you're on set. And if you're at the trailers, it's the second AD uh, and or the second second, if it's a big enough crew. Um, and they'll help you sign in and out and kind of keep track of you at lunch and that kind of thing. Make sure you go back into makeup and hair after lunch for touch ups and just generally find you. And I always walk up to the production and first or second AD, and I say, hey, I just want you to know, uh, if I'm not in my trailer, uh, I am within 50 feet of camera. But, so yes. if you're ever looking for me, I will be in two places. And they were like, okay, good to know. That's very professional. Okay, so I like that. I was like some movie, and they're like, this is a PA. He's going to go with you. And like, and I go, <laughs> I could save the PA, put him to work with our department. They need him. <laughs> I will be in my trailer or 50 feet from camera. 
I like that. So again, how did you get that role? Did you... I, God, I don't know. Uh, quick read. Um, mm-hmm. Pretty quick. It wasn't a lot. I don't think it was an offer because the only thing I've ever been offered was Love Boat. <laughs> um, and when I heard the cast, I I mean, Courtney Gaines, Malachi, are you freaking yeah. kidding me? <laughs> Deloise, <laughs> Deloise, his whole freaking family is hysterical, and he was the entertainer on set. Deloise would just oh, really? tell stories. Yep, yep. Um, and uh, Kraus is a fam, you know, practically family before doing that. Mm. I can't remember the order of the three projects I've done with Will Wheaton. Oh, and London Brothers, Jeremy and Jason. Mm-hmm. I knew them before as well. But Will, we've done Python, Toy Soldiers, and Tales from the Crypt. Um, I don't remember the order. What year was our crypt? Uh, I think it was 90, season five, so it's probably 93. Oh, so it was uh, the second of our three projects together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, this and, is one, one of those Tales episodes that I could have watched the whole movie. Oh, and these guys are, Let's not forget yeah. Meredith. Yeah, this is one of those Tales episodes. I'm like, I want another hour of this. I want like a miniseries of like, you know, Animal House 1993. I uh, was just at an autograph convention in Southampton. It was mostly a Back to the Future reunion. Mm. But I went because Maya Bruton, who was in Back to the Future, uh, and she said she had to shoot her scenes twice, once with Eric Stoltz and once with Uh, Michael J. Fox. Um, And she, uh, so uh, Bob Gale Jr. was there. So he's got a line everyone's there to see talk to bob gale jr and i'm talking to you know some people that did effects on the car or you know other cast members and um we're at the hotel it was like a three-day con it's one place really to get dinner and me and my wife go down to see if we get a table strangely there was always a table they're always like now call for reservations i'm like there's always a table so we get up and we're right behind bob gale and uh his friend and uh kind of to my wife I'm like that, that, i think that, that is bob gill yeah i haven't talked to him at all uh yet that weekend and uh he said something to reception and i said uh i said oh hey, bob wants a table or whatever and he kind of just kind of did a half look back and he goes hey keith how you doing <laughs> and I, went, uh, I haven't seen or talked to him in you know the 30 years since doing it and i i i i um, I remarked, I said, I can't believe that. I can't you believe you remembered, you know, it's all oh, the people, the musical you're just doing. How do you remember that? And he goes, it was the first thing I ever directed. Yeah. So I remember all of you guys. And that kind of blew me away. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm, I was actually, cause we did, we reviewed your episode last night and I was going through uh, Bob's IMDb trivia and I'm like, I thought he did more directing like in my head. I, I just assume cause he associated with so many big things. Uh, but he was more writing, producing. He did, and then he did the tell, uh, Back to the Future t- uh, cartoon series. He directed a bunch of those. Used Cars, 1941. Mm-hmm. Did he also write I Want to Hold Your Hand? Yeah. So he wrote, he did oh, all those for on. writing. Yeah. Come on. I mean, exactly. all great, great project. Right. But I'm, I, I'm, I want to do some more directing. He's got he told it. told us a Back to the Future story that uh, blew my mind. Mm-hmm. He said, and uh, he had a, a beer, a pint or two. And he said, uh, he said, we uh, had uh, Marty's mom. And uh, he goes, I had written in one of my ex's names, oh. you know, Mary Sue, whatever. Mary And uh, and Bob Zemeckis said, oh, no, no, no. I want to name it after my wife. So when Martha or whatever the hell her name was, right? And Sid Scheinberg, the head of Universal, goes, actually, I have a great idea. <laughs> Why don't we name her Lorraine? Think of Jaws. President of Universal was Sid Scheinberg. The first person cast was his wife, Lorraine Gray. Mm-hmm. So Lorraine McFly is named after Lorraine Gray. <laughs> yeah. well, that, that and I died. When he told me that, I, I kind of died. And uh, uh, So he's a very, very cool guy. Um, and he yeah. always tells you how he got his ideas. He'll tell you his process. He's really great to talk to. Yeah, I was, I was talking to someone about getting him on the show as well. He did a uh, forward for the uh, book that David McGifford just put out, or he's working on putting out right now, who is the um, assistant director on Back to the Future and a bunch of other Zemeckis films. 
And uh, we actually interviewed Dave McGifford uh, just a couple weeks ago. Great interview, too. Um, all right, here's a question for you. So in Adventures in Babysitting, Bradley Whifford plays Mike, douchebag boyfriend that you almost punch. You come so close to punching. Who would you wish you'd punch more? Bradley, Fit, Bradley Whitford's Mike or Kevin Dillon's Les? Oh, Who's more punchable? Uh, well, it would have been Bradley Whitford, but of course, Brad holds back and doesn't stoop to his level with my little voice cracking. It's so cute. <laughs> Such a Bobby Brady. Uh, uh, or which Brady was it that was his voice was cracking? Oh, the middle. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't remember. Bobby, but I don't know their names. Um, yeah. Uh, so, I had no desire to punch uh, less. No, because you want to please. You're finding your status in your, uh, really in your 20s, but in your teens and 20s, you are trying to find where you fit in with the group of guys. Are you third? Are you the, you know, whipping boy? Are you the leader? And uh, that at that point, it's just prostrate yourself in front of him because he's a very <laughs> scary guy. Uh, but also once you get through that, then you get status of being in a fraternity. I'm, I'm just saying, if you got a free shot, no consequences, which, which one would you want rather punch? Oh, it would have been um, Bradley Whitford because he's so slimy. He's yeah, so, he's so... Uh, he, when the girl who was playing um, Sesame Plexer, they were hysterical together because they would improv and do, you know, you always do before and after. So <laughs> you do a pre-scene rolling up to action and, uh, a lot of actors will just kind of start and they'll kind of be in character and the director has to go, all right, let's start the scene. And they'll cut that together. And then also when it ends, it's not over for the actor. Don't just turn it off. Keep going. You never know what is going to happen. So some of their dialogue and their looks and takes are all, you know, something they worked out right in front of us. And we just hated her so much. We loved her on the set. She's a sweetie pie. And uh, so is he, we, you know, he, it, uh, we saw him at a, uh, Emmy event they were uh, doing a um, Q&A for mm -hmm. one of his many projects and uh, saw him again and he's just you know immediately like you know how are you how's it going and he's just so present and you don't get that a lot from a lot of people mm -hmm. after so many years and so, so many people from Avengers of Babysitting just continued to work so many people that's awesome yes you should do a reunion we are yo uh, Rhode Island Comic Con, uh, early early November. Elizabeth Shue, Anthony Rapp, Maya Bruton, Keith Coogan, and Vincent D'Onofrio. Oh my God! Oh, I want to go so bad. That amazing. Oh, that sounds great. Okay, you need to do one in LA now, <laughs> right? It'll be Elizabeth Shue's first autograph convention. Really? That's surprising. Yeah, it's really She's been a, in so much. Uh Cobra Kai reunion mm -hmm. with Ralph Macchio and Billy Zabka and all the Cobra Kai kids. Maybe Marty Cove. I don't know. I don't know for sure if he's there. But um I've been going to the Rhode Island Comic Con in Colorado Springs, which is the same um uh people that run them. And uh we've been very excited we've uh, you know it kind of gotten a little early bird worm that they were working on it and um uh, once that happened, uh, you know, everybody asked, where's Anthony? How come Anthony hasn't been announced? And so they got Anthony, even though he's, you know, in the middle of uh, flying through space and taking on uh, evil bad men down here on Earth. Anthony is still uh, going to come. And I can't wait to see him again, see him every so and so many years. He's a New Yorker. I'm an L.A. guy. So then Lisa's out in. Uh, if you're cool, you see the first thing we learned on shooting the baby saying Elizabeth Shue. We go, Elizabeth, Elizabeth. She goes, just call me Lisa. And hmm. It's L I S A, Elizabeth. Okay. And uh, so I felt so cool to be able to call her Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, let's talk some other projects. So, you know, you, we all went through the whole quarantine thing, but you uh, came out with the quarantine bunch. Tell me about that. Oh, yeah. Shortly after it hit, I had just had my 50th birthday party. Oh. And uh, then it all kind of peeled apart after that and um, had met back up with a, a friend from junior high, Jeff McIntyre, 
uh, and the party was at my friend, uh, Ryan Paul James. He's a writer, producer, director. So we all got together. Let's do something. So pandemic hit and uh, there is a real child star support group. It is the ex child actor secret society. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, not only has it got, you know, 220 members strong on uh, Facebook, but we have real life had pre pandemic had real life meetups and we meet it's, you know, our friends backyards and homes mm. and you know uh cry in our soups and tell each other war stories and pat each other on the back and support each other well, that's and it's re- nice to be able to really talk to cool have been through a similar kind of experience and the, the more that you kind of clump child stars you know there's a certain stereotype every story is so different what age they broke what age they became a has-been whether they kept working or not um just their experience and everyone's got a really truly different story Mm. So, so it's great that you guys have a support system like that that's really cool so we said let's do something funny we're we're seeing the tv everything's zoom news and we go why don't well they would have to take their meetings online and so we did quarantine bunch you know like the brady bunch mm-hmm. there's a website the quarantine bunch.com um, there's a little universe built there uh it's got a little bit of anti-comedy i don't know if you remember the um adult swim promo for uh uh was it too many cooks oh yeah oh yeah so s- more along like that it is what you think it's gonna be and then it isn't what you think it's gonna be <laughs> and that's what i think of the charm of it i think it's six episodes um yeah i love quarantine bunch we all shot it over zoom from our homes and what's funny is they uh that week Saturday Night Live, we shot on a Sunday. Saturday Night Live had done a lot of Zoom stuff because mm-hmm. they it was their first week back, but they weren't back. Mm-hmm. All of their cast members recorded from home. Well, two weeks of audiences looking at Zoom stuff on news and really everything. Uh, audiences got sick of it. And uh, NBC had mailed out. Uh, new cameras, lights, green screen, sound equipment to all of their cast and crew. Uh, so that the next show they did, I think it was two weeks after Saturday Night Live started looking more like Saturday Night Live. And also we saw the uh, skin pulled from late night talk show hosts who no longer had the band and the audience and the team of writers. And, Makeup artists. <laughs> and you go, oh, oh, really? So almost anybody could be a uh, late night talk show host because I'm seeing now the raw, you know, and it is for them to do that live is a tremendous skill that that alone, just to keep your cool. Uh, I watched Mario Lopez shoot um, extra episodes up in uh, universal city walk. And this guy is a machine, his names and credits and things. And he's just, you know, promoting stuff for people. And uh, uh, that is another special was a, we were talking to Allison Ingram. She said, you got to hang your ass out there and really do as many things as you can in interviews and promotions and charity events and uh, uh, live privately in public. <laughs> right, right. And then you have another uh, project, Wrong Reasons. Wrong Reasons is great. Directed by Josh Rausch, uh, starring Liv Rausch. Uh, he directed Magnum Dopus, the making of Jane and Silent Bob reboot. Oh, okay. And we're watching it. Was on it's on Amazon Prime, and um, we're watching uh, Magnum Dopus, and me and my wife go, "That he's got a nice camera. Like that is a film camera." It turns out it's an, it's an Alexa, and it's like you know six and a half mag, uh, whatever. What's the term? Um, uh, total high D crazy um, cinema. 6K, yeah, yeah, six and a half K, and um he shoots a feature on it and it's wrong reasons it is um who's in red state Kevin uh, smith uh the star of that the preacher his son um, oh uh park in real life uh he kidnaps uh live who is a britney spears rock star kind of punk um who is drugged out smacked out as boyfriend like recording her and like streaming it just ruining her life and career and so the weirdo kidnaps her and is going to clean her up 
they t- it's a you know it's a one two person thing but it also has ralph garman as a detective trying to find oh, her okay uh harley quinn smith kevin smith uh, a lot of great cameos um it's ralph garman is fantastic in this film uh, yeah, I'm, I, I, I used I used to listen to um, the Hello Babylon. I've been to the live tapings of that great show. Great guy, uh, James yep. Parker is his son. James Parker, so he uh, uh, is fantastic in the film. Just so raw and real and low key. It's a lot of people kind of push, and they're very broad. And film, you think thought, and film kind of sees it uh and uh funny harley quinn was uh there and uh asked her what's going on she's like i'm about to go off to texas to work for months like months and months texas but whatever project it was she bought a house so that's cool (laughs) Um, and she's so harley quinn is so good in jay and silent bob reboot mm -hmm. phenomenal actress oh no i grew up on kevin smith movies so i definitely i watched that as as i could i I actually really want to see clerks three is uh it's great premiering very soon uh in la good it'll be uh available on uh blu-ray here uh in a week okay are you are you in it no i'm i'm in reboot you're in just uh, a reboot i'm not in i gave him a break Re- reboot is the mall rats universe right and clerks three is the clerks i mean the branching off from yeah. the clerks so i'm going to hit them up for mall rats too that's appropriate i have friends uh the london brother the brothers I'm, I'm yeah and doherty who i did my jump street with we've got brody who now has said you know it's quoted you know keith Cookin classic don't you know dishes are done man come on it's i've got to be in mall rats too so that that is happening more rats more, more rats <laughs> that's amazing i hope it's happening i hope you know kevin is he's he reminds me of a uh john waters he mm-hmm. reminds me of a hal ashby he reminds me of someone who can make stuff that he knows his audience mm-hmm. he doesn't give a fuck about notes or he goes that i I raised the money myself so I can kind of do what I want. Um, yeah, he has to get in bed with studios. He's been burned before with rights. Dogma yeah. is a great example. Um, so he's, you know, cautious. He's got fuck you money. And that lets him be a pure artist. I love him. Love Kevin dearly. He gets a lot my... of shit online. And I, th- I know he takes it personally. He reads that shit. He's on his social media. And they'll bash him for He-Man or this or that. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Dude, imagine if it wasn't him pulling the reins on He Man. You'd really lost your mind. Yeah, you know, no, there's only so much a director can do. Well, and when you're a director for that. hire, like he said on Goldberg's, he goes, "I just ride on the train, man." Oh, well, that's great. Yeah, it's my zombie yeah. Kevin Smith with his uh, um, Monroeville jersey. Is that from the comic or the cartoon? um i've had this for like 15 years i don't remember anymore that chris mcdonald style is that <sighs> i have to look it up because i've had this for so long okay. it's I, I don't think it's from I anything specific or clerks the tv show okay it's like and yeah it's like that there, style but different and i see um jeff and uh i ask him I go, oh, you're going up for uh, Randall? And he goes, no, I'm going up for Dante. They've cast Randall. Oh, no, I saw. Did I see? They Jim Brewer had been cast. And so really? both, both <laughs> had to read for the other part. That's funny. <laughs> and there is no hope. They, you know, they made a pilot of Adventures in Babysitting starring Jennifer Guthrie. Mm. Uh, it, they aired it two o'clock in the morning on a Friday. Uh, Brian Austin Green and um, uh, Joey Lawrence are uh, Brad and Daryl. You got to see it. And my current agent, Courtney Peldon, is uh, Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> great. Okay. I have a great agent because she knows what it's like to be a child actor. <laughs> I got to check that out. Um, yeah, it's on YouTube. Just type in Adventures in Babysitting, CBS Pilot. I think it was CBS. And uh, y'all, the, they use one of the songs from the film, one of the blue songs. And mm. then the kids 
get chased to the 7-Eleven that gets held up and then they go into the sewers where they get chased by crocodiles and then they get out and that's the end. And it was just not picked up. <laughs> when you watch it, you'll see why. But it's got whiffs of the original and you see mm-hmm. them trying and it's so funny they didn't call us at all. <laughs> yeah. I mean, maybe got picked up. They could like put you in cameos or other roles. I don't know how you make that series now because... <laughs> Is it the whole night? Is like well, it's adventures. Adventures. It's not singular yeah. adventure. There's many adventures. You can make Chris an anthology. We'll continue to babysit for the Andersons. I was gonna say, or it's an anthology where she goes to a different family and has a different adventure every time. Exactly. There you go. See, you should work for uh for the studios, man. I know. Yeah, they know they should come to me, man. Um, all right, let's here's a question for you. So we're in the month of October. It's spooky season. What are your go-to October spooky movies? So I really like the new um kind of post one uh bloom house uh, mm-hmm. trying to establish a new Freddie, Jason, or Michael Myers. And I thought malignant was probably the closest I'd seen to a franchise yes. building character. I shit my pants here at home, no theater, but I got a big TV and uh, I started to catch on and my brain started to get it. And once it clicked in and I've watched it again and the clues are there from Mm -hmm. the beginning, they're overt, they're in your face. And for me to take an hour before I figured that shit out, I was disappointed in myself, but I (laughs) loved the film. Um, I love horror. My wife is scared by Saturday the 14th, starring Richard Benjamin. Okay. <laughs> you know, like any sort of horror, you know. Have I, you seen uh, uh, have you seen the new uh Terrifier? The new there's a new one that came out this I weekend. I was supposed to be in Terrifier too, and I'm so oh, pissed shit. at them. We're doing autograph conventions with the guys, and they're like, Yeah, you'll be in Terrifier. I go, is it SAG? They're like, We're working on that. <laughs> <laughs> oh but man. congratulations to 800 screens nationwide. I know. that's crazy uh, please go out and see terrifier 2 or get it on uh on physical media download stream it uh it is it put the fun back into funny horror mm-hmm. yeah no, I and need it also to see just that. goes too long on torture so <laughs> uh another one i'm just telling everyone about right now is um oh, death stream it's on shutter it's Evil Dead meets Blair Witch with an influencer as the lead. No, that's great. I yeah, like it it's already. on each other. Death Stream. I, I highly recommend that one. Uh, any other classic horror movies that you go to during the Halloween se- Halloween season? Well, I do consider Jaws a horror film. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll always see that. Uh, Raider, Raiders has some horror elements. Um, so you just you know my number one and number two films. Um, I uh like body modification horror. Mm. Uh, Cronenberg. Uh, that's not supposed to be there. Why isn't that attached anymore? Why am I hostile? Oh, I could actually binge some Hostel right now. And I'll I, line I'm them a, up and let's watch them. I'm a huge fan of Hostel too. I think that's a really really underrated movie. Yep, I just saw Heather Montezarato at. Oh, uh, cool at salt lake city fan x 22 uh yeah did you like um crimes of the future didn't see it okay uh and i because i'd heard it's okay i'd actually wanted to see war gods uh the um phil tippett uh, oh no um magnum opus what's that called oh Um, god it's god of something war or God, no, Mad God. It's Mad God. It's yeah, Mad that God. is that I, I was I playing limited in like the new art theater here in LA. And I went, you know, I've got a touch of like borderline manic depression. Mm-hmm. I think that would tip me over right now, but I also might need that. I may need to dig that deep. Do you drink a couple beers or whatever else you're into and go enjoy that movie because <laughs> it is something you've never seen I could before. Watch it at home. I gotta pay like six bucks or something. I could watch it's it. It's on um, again, it's on Shutter if you have that. It is okay. Yeah. I don't. That's I have like 19 different streaming. I, know. I just saw this thing on my thing extra on Amazon. And I was like, what is that? What is that? I kind of dug and I finally went to Amazon. It was my Discovery Plus mm. on top of the Amazon Prime. I had to get discovery for, I don't know what, but you know, they're so great at like this new show 
great premise, great cast, and it's something you don't have, like uh, the offer. I need yeah. to get Paramount Plus for the offer. What's really cool about Shutter is they have like an always running channel. They have three always running channels. So it's like sh- slashix. So, so there's always a slasher playing. It's just like it's just like old school TV, where you just go in and you go to the movie, and you know you never know what's gonna play. And it's just like the Blood old school Beach, days. Exterminator Two. Yeah, uh, Chopping Mall. You know who knows? Excellent, excellent. All great, uh, great, uh, great stuff. Um, Motel Hell. Motel Hell. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, sleepaway camp yeah all great stuff oh, yeah. i do autocorrect conventions with those guys yeah um all right let's round out our our uh, so interview. my, horror, my mm-hmm. horror includes sales from the crypt but also python with robert england will yes. wheaton jenny mccarthy billy zabka uh frayne rosenoff and we take on a 130 foot genetically engineered military python that uh begat python's Python versus Boa. And I think Billy Zapka starred in Pythons, the sequel. And that was made by UFO Ken Oland's company. He was in summer school sleeping on the cot because he danced at Chippendales at night. <laughs> so he had a low budget B movie company with everyone used the same sets, the same cars, the same actors. Uh, and uh, they said the snake animation is the easiest to articulate because it doesn't have limbs. Right. So sh- shadows are easier and everything. And so Python, you have to watch Python and you have to get the DVD because on it is a uh, DVD commentary by the director that is the most candid, frank. And y- people say, I cannot believe this is on a commentary. And he really tells you what it's like to make a low budget or mm. special effects feature. You must get Python on DVD. All right. I'll go on the email right Soul after Keeper, this. Uh, Darren Fariola, who directed... Um, uh, Ivory Tower with Michael Ironside and Patrick Van Horn um, and uh, Kari Wurr. Uh, uh, we um, did, it is uh, two buddy, they are psychic, ghosty, demonic investigators. It's like a Bing Crosby, Bob Hope picture with Robert Davi as a floating mentor to them as they track down a book that shouldn't be found. You've you've heard this classic gem before. And Soul Keeper is a really f- fun that it's almost like ripped R.I.P.D. Oh yeah. In that weird half, t- it doesn't work as a comedy and it doesn't work as a horror, but somehow both of them work together. Is like, all right, it's charming. That's awesome. I'll check that out. It's got good comedy. It's got good timing. Great editing. All right. Here's a and question for that, you. So you must. Oh, yeah, well, okay. There you go. Yes. <laughs> you're burying the lead. You buried the lead. All right. In the very first episode of Tales of the Crypt, William Sadler walks into a diner and asks for a cheese sandwich and a cup of coffee. If you were to walk into a diner and want a cold cheese sandwich, not grilled, cold, what kind of cheese would you want? Oh, it's got to be uh, white bread mayo and just hunks of cheddar just cut it right off the brick and lay those suckers out like a quarter inch thick and that's it good to talk to sharp cheddar medium cheddar smoked sharp cheddar oh sharp. Or sharp cheddar oh smoked let's add okay i hate liquid smoke it comes out in your pee like this yeah, you oh, smell oh. It, you're like oh i had liquid smoke yesterday definitely <laughs> All right, and then our uh, final question, you know, we're Dash the Crypt, we give dad advice. Um, I don't know if you're a father or not, but, you know, you're obviously could be a mentor to many people. You've been through I a lot. I raised my parents. I raised my little brother. I have a fur baby, a 10-year-old mm-hmm. uh, a Pomeranian Chihuahua mix. I've, I've, I love kids. Kids are drawn to me like magnets. So shoot away. So what advice? would you give to our fathers, our fellow fathers, fellow um, mentors? It could be, well, you know. As we've got Halloween approaching. Mm, yes. This is a great opportunity to support uh, the choices a, a child can make. Let them know all the choices. Mm, Don't just okay. say, this is what you do. You go, you uh, depending on their age, because there's a certain age where they just wear all in black and egg houses and TP stuff and get crazy. <laughs> And that needs to happen. But developmentally, as you're going along, do you want to be, you know, E.T.? Do you want to be, you know, cowboy? Do you you know, whatever you want to be. 
and you help them with the bestest, most elaborate, the proudest, so they can wear whatever choice that is. And whatever, if they make, you just let them know and and let them make their, if you give them all the information for the options, you could be bad, bad, here's what might happen. You could be good, here's what might happen. You know what? You go do your own thing. And guess what? You'll find they're smarter. They, you know, you're already there and that's going to make them better people. Um, you know, dads, I, I didn't have my dad growing up. Mm. A great stepdad's three. Um, I had, uh, uh, lost him. Now he's gone. I have my mom left. Um, so that I didn't have that. I latched on to father figures on a lot on, uh, directors, mm. uh, Michael Ironside, five mm. minutes talking to Michael Ironside. And he goes, tell me about your father. And I go, well, really, I was raised by my mom and she's really crazy. And this thing goes, that's not what I asked. <laughs> Tell me about your father. And he read me cold like a clock. Wow. So be uh, just be there, support, support them mm. to get their back, lie, break the camera, erase the footage. It's like you, you got their back. Lie to mom. Oh, my God. You got to build that lie to mom moment, whether it's something little or big. You got to build that with your kid. It's important because that's a societal construct. Mm -hmm. Hey, fucker, you're in my spot. You can't say that. That begins with lying to mom. There's certain things you can't do. You can't say in society while you're moving around. And even though you feel like it, you have to behave a different way that is an expectation. And um, so you tell a kid you can feel the way you want to feel. Mm. You can do what you want to do as long as you know what's going to happen in the whole spectrum of choices you have and then wow. sit down and watch the rehearsal with Nathan Fiedler and break their mind <laughs> <laughs> I love it that's good that's really good <laughs> they'll go dad are you an actor pretending to be my dad no I'm really your father it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right um so what's next I for had you that moment with Ted Danson mm -hmm. on cousins oh really Oh. We fly together from LA to uh, Vancouver to do this three month picture, which was going to be lavish, uh, well funded by Paramount and co starring Sean Young, Isabella Rossellini, Norma Aleandro, Billy Peterson, uh, Lloyd Bridges, Joel Schumacher's directing. I'm, I can't believe I got it. I asked, you know, the producers later were almost done filming and they go uh first we would have paid double to what your agent asked i said go don't tell me shit like that and they go but also do you know why you got the part and i said was i the best mitch was i the best you know and they go no you weren't you weren't the best mitch like, what they said you made ted dance in the best when you read with him mm, that's a big comment i mean i will take that that's what i like to do is support other actors and because if you forget about you then your ego's out of it and you'll be you'll you'll be if you're just focusing on the other your performer if you're thinking about the audience or what the studio wants the director wants you're sunk you just focus on the other person your scene partner you focus on this whether it's a tennis ball on a stand focus on that scene partner hmm. good all right well what you got next what's in the what's in the cooker i've got uh three more autograph conventions to finish out the year Got, you to, uh, uh, do you want to promote them real quick? Oh, uh, sure. We've got Fandom Unite in San Diego. It is a first year con. A lot of 80s and 90s mm. guests, uh, games, fun, toys. Uh, we've got um, ch -ch 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 Nerd what, ret Retropalooza in mm. um, Pasadena, Texas. I oh. think it's in Texas. Wrong Pasadena. Uh, and then, right. And then uh, <laughs> we've got uh, the Rhode Island Comic Con beginning of November. Working on a couple more shows, trying to get around um, Midwest more, the South. Uh, and if you do want to see Keith Coogan in a personal appearance or a convention near you, uh, hit the con up, email him. You see a con and they announce guests. You go, hey, Keith Coogan would make a great guest. We'd love to meet him. Uh, and that helps me get into cons. How would someone reach out to you? I am at KeithCooganOnline.com, a website where you can see what's up, watch some videos, and like hear like the story of like what I do, <laughs> and like get an EPK, <laughs> like an electronic best kit, 
And uh, you can uh, then go buy merchandise, get autographs. You can get a signed dish that says dishes are done, man. Um, <laughs> so lots of fun stuff at Keith Coogan online.com that'll also lead you to my socials which are all boring like will wheaton he got twitter because originally a text message and they charged you for text messages and things and it was like short you could text and it would update the web how powerful and he was will w w i l w for will wheaton great short handle mine keith coogan instagram keith coogan facebook <laughs> keith coogan twitter keith coogan very uncreative but uh, come follow. I'm full on Facebook at 5,000 friends, but friends are fans. So I don't, <laughs> I do have a fan page. I control go uh, that or follow me on Facebook as well. And then uh, Instagram, my wife, Pinky Lovejoy uh, or Pinky Lovejoy Coogan. She is much more fun to follow. She posts much better pictures. <laughs> I just basically promote cons coming up. All right. Well, now I know about the, the dish. I, I know I'm getting my wife for Hanukkah this year yes and uh if only she listened to the show she would know what i'm getting here but you're getting seven dishes <laughs> getting a whole dinner set all right keith thank you so much for coming on this was a blast oh i appreciate it thanks for the great questions and uh, the time all right and uh we appreciate everyone for listening we really appreciate it if people would give us a rating and review on itunes rating on spotify and with that we thank you for listening to dads from the crypt go dads <laughs> follow dads from the crypt on facebook twitter and instagram or i will follow you to the grave <laughs> no seriously you really should watch but be careful what you ask for you may get it Ha 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 